All right, so a bit of an interesting uh, job here. This is an R3600, uh, one of only five that was built with the billet heads. This was about 2005, this engine was built. And I know um, it's of about that time, not only because of the serial number, but because we only built five nine-cylinder engines, R3600, with the older first-generation billet head. Um, and so this engine's interesting because it's come back to us, the customer's local, it's a really good guy. It's come back to us because he wanted us to test run it um, and because this engine, believe it or not, uh, on the customer's um, stipulation, he didn't want it to be run. So it's the only engine that we've ever built, uh, brand new, that has actually never run. So it was really interesting. So he brought the air engine back to us now, which is what, you know, just recently, September 2002. It was built in 2005, probably mid-2005. And um, so what's that, you know, 17, 18 years, it's never run. Now he's looked after it, he's oiled it, and, you know, kept it all lubricated internally. And when we pulled it apart, it was absolutely like new. So the reason that we got it back was um, that he uh, wanted to do all the upgrades. So some of those upgrades, the main one was the replacement of the cylinder studs. We used to use um, uh, grub screws back in the day for convenience and they were too brittle and we had some studs break. This one actually had one stud that was broken or it broke when we tried to remove it. So we had to get that stud out, uh, which wasn't a big deal. And now it's been, it's got the latest studs in it. Apart from that, we changed some of the gearing but pretty much it was it was right, pretty right. Um, some of the uh, the gearbox will be updated as well. But um, yeah, so it was really interesting to see um, this engine because it um, basically like a time machine, like a time capsule, never been run, and was in pristine condition. So it was just like it was built. So we've actually pulled the entire engine apart. Now I'm just at the last stage. I just put the in fact I haven't put the final cylinder down. You see it's still loose. So that cylinder's just, just gone down. I'll finish off putting that on and then finish the rest of it and get it on the test stand. See, so it's got the original exhaust stubs. This is before we actually built an exhaust system proper. Well, we certainly didn't have one for the nine cylinder. So it's just got the exhaust stacks on it. And actually, I'll run it like that. Customer's gonna be really keen to see it run. So when I get it up on the test stand, which is right there, we'll, uh, we'll do a video of it running. So um, again, this engine is the only engine that we've ever built that's never been test run. And again, that was because the customer um, stipulated that that was uh, what he wanted. But now he wants to see it run. Um, so yeah, where are we at? So it's pretty much going together. Uh, here's the rest of his bits and pieces, rock covers, rocker arms, distributed caps, mini sump all his clamps and stuff so we'll get all that on and i'll rebuild the gearbox and we'll get it on the test stand and we'll give it a run so it's one of only five r3600 engines with the billet heads now, there's nothing wrong with the billet heads the only reason we switched from them is first of all i don't actually think they look that great although some people seem to like them but they were expensive to make and they were slow to make because they were machined from solid billet material now uh, we do a cast head much like this one here which I think looks a little bit more authentic more organic um, and you can see if we wander over here my own engine on this Bowers Flybaby which I've had since 2005 and this engine is a billet head engine so my own aircraft the Bowers Flybaby has got uh, a billet head engine. So there's nothing wrong with them. I'll never change this engine. This has been on here since 2002. Um, it served me quite well. It's got well over a thousand hours total time, the engine, and it's barely been touched. So that's the billet R2800. And as I said, come 2005, mid 2005, we designed the castings for the cylinder head and we switched from a billet head to a cast head. The engine didn't really make any more power and it's exactly the same engine, it's just that we changed the heads. You can see my kit fox here, which is a bit dusty. This was only built a few years ago. October 2017 was the test flight. And as you can see, this engine here 
has got the lightest heads. Or well, not the lightest heads, because we've had a few versions of the, of the cast head. Um, this engine's actually got a bit of a mixed bag. It's got all the cast heads, and it's got one of the very latest die cast heads, which are made out of metal molds. These are actually a sand casting, and this one's a, uh, a die casting. It's a bit of a mix and match, this engine. It's, obviously, it's been built for my purposes, so not for sale. You see it doesn't have the rocker pin exposed there. It's got a flush pin there. You can see it. I don't know if you can see it. And these ones, the earlier ones, you can see they've got a rocker pin there. That's the head of a rocker pin. You just see it there. There's the rocker pin shoulder there. Well, you see it's got a nut on that side there. See the nut? Whereas the latest heads, they have a flush pin. Oh, you can't really see it. You might see it there. No, they have a flush pin and it's sort of blind. But it does the same job, fits the same engine. So there you go. A billet 3600. So let's uh, get it all back together and get it on the test stand and give it a run. Maybe we'll get the customer's reaction. I'll call him up. He wants to see it run, so how about I call him up and get him to see the very first shot at fires. Hopefully it fires. All right, take it easy. All righty, so now I've got the engine progressing nicely. Got all the pushrod tubes fitted. Got the new rocker covers on. Um, even though these rocker covers actually have the O-ring groove, these earlier heads won't accept the O-ring groove. So we still use, we can use the gaskets with them instead. So I've got the gasket there with the, the rocker cover. But they look nice. They've got the uh, all uh, powder coated and machined. So that's all done. Um, now next is to stand the engine. All the interlink hoses have been done between the, the heads. So those hoses drain all the oil. So what happens is oil's fed up the hollow uh, push rods and it lubricates the rocker gear and then all that oil accumulates and eventually winds its way down all these interlink hoses. They drain back to the mini sump which is there and then the oil drains into the mini sump where the scavenge pump draws from this mini sump. So I've got the main crankcase and nose bowl drain ready to be connected to the nose bowl when that's done. So what's going to happen now is the engine will get lifted vertical and I'll be able to then work on the, put the intake pipes on. And as you see, they're missing. This is where the intake pipes go here. And do the ignition timing, put some of the accessories on, such as the um, starter motor and the alternator, carburetor, do all the ignition wiring, all the high tension leads on the distributor caps, and we should be able to get it ready for the test run. So I'll get it vertical and then uh, check back in once I've done those extra bits. All right, so we are now done. The all billet um, 3600 from 2005 which has never run, is now built. And uh, so all the upgrades have been done and gearbox has just been installed. Put the new manifold on there. All the later rocker caps, the nice black ones there. Have to use gaskets with these because these particular billet heads don't take the O-ring so well because they don't have enough surface air on the top of the O-ring to fully seat. So we use the later caps with the uh, with the gaskets, and that'll work fine. So next is um, next is we get it onto the test stand over there, and put the engine mount on and uh, plumb it all up, and let's see if she runs. I expect it will. So uh, that'll be next. So here we are. We're about ready to go. I uh, got the engine installed. All plumbed up. It's just got the open exhaust stubs for the moment. We actually don't actually have an exhaust collector ring for a billet nine-cylinder engine. Again, this is a 2005 R3600 that has never been run. It was, um, as I said earlier in the earlier 
the customer insisted that the engine remain new. So he put it into storage, and now it's come out of storage, come back to us. Some 15 or 17 years later, and uh, we've done some upgrades. Basically, we tore the engine down, rebuilt it. Knowing with what we know now, made a few little changes, upgraded the gearbox. Uh, what else did we do? Uh, just, just general. It was pretty in good, pretty good condition. In fact, it was oh, it was brand new. What else did we change? Um, bits and pieces. Some of the cam gearing. Uh, obviously, it's got the new black rocket covers on there. Anyway, it's all back together now and ready to test run. Now, this engine has never run. And it hasn't even run now. You can see the exhaust is still nice soot, right? Perfectly clean. So there's proof that it has never run. Right, and there's exhaust. So it's never fired a shot. We're about to run it now. So we've got oil. Um... What I also did with this engine is I've got a, an electric oil pump and I put the oil pick up in the oil tank here and then the outlet of the oil pump, electric pump, I put into the fitting on the side of the engine which is right there and I pressurized the engine, primed the engine with oil and it turned it around by hand so all the galleries are full of oil, all the lifters are pumped up and or got oil passing through them, the gearbox has got oil through it, and the master ride main bearing. So the engine's all lubed up, ready to go, and that's why I've got a little bit of oil on the ground stripped out overnight. So, because uh, I installed this uh, before I finished work last night, and with a fresh start this morning here, uh, I've got the fuel hooked up, and uh, let's fire it up. Well, let's, let's do that now. So we're just going to prime the TBI. So I open the throttle wide open, expose all the holes on the spray bar. I'm just going to manually press the primer. I've got a little hole drilled in the air cleaner, which lets the oil fuel drain out. Close the throttle and let's fire it up. <laughs> 